How's it going guys, my name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to convert JavaScript callback functions into promises. Now, the main two benefits of watching this video is that you're going to learn how promises work in general if you're not too sure already. But also by using this technique, you're then able to take advantage of the async await syntax to perform your commonly used functionality or things that you need to wait on. So I'm going to be showing you three examples in today's video. The first one is going to be the typical example using the set timeout function to create a wait function. I'm also going to be showing you how to use this with the geolocation API to get your user's position. And lastly, I'm going to be showing you how to convert a file that has been uploaded into base64 once again uh, by you know wrapping it inside a promise and getting the dot then syntax to work. So let's begin with the most basic example and that is going to be of course the set timeout example. So the way this works is we're able to essentially wait in our code. So if you've used a different language uh, in the past, which supports a sleep function, this right here is going to look very similar. So let's first actually uh, generate the code of the, of the actual usage. So what it would look like to use this function. So firstly, let's make a new function called wait, which accepts a milliseconds okay and then down here we're gonna say wait for two seconds dot then then say something like console dot log and I'll say two seconds have passed just like that so now of course essentially what happens is I want to say two seconds have passed after of course two seconds have passed so how do we now implement this function well the way you convert a callback function into a promise is by simply returning a new instance of promise into, or sorry, from your new method. So I've got this new wait method here. It's going to return a new promise. Now, the promise constructor takes in a function which accepts both a resolve and reject parameter. So I'll say here, resolve and reject just like this okay so the syntax here might look a little bit strange if you're not used to it but basically like i said we're returning a new promise from this wait function and then this promise is going to take in another function and this function exposes resolve and reject now all you need to know about doing this is that resolve is for when your thing was successful and reject was is for when there was an error. So you simply, uh, you just pass through these functions into your standard one. So let me show you how this works. I'm now going to say inside here, simply set timeout and then we're going to pass in the resolve as the function and then also pass in the milliseconds. So what's happening here? Well, we're just saying set timeout as per usual, like you always would do it, right? But then we're saying after X amount of milliseconds, run this function. The function is going to be the resolve, okay? Now, the resolve is what you'll see shortly essentially whatever you pass into here as the dot then. So what I've highlighted right now, this console log, this is what the resolve is. So when we say set timeout, we pass resolve in, we're just sort of passing along whatever this is based on the usage, okay? Then we're saying milliseconds, we're grabbing it from the milliseconds that we passed in prior in this outer scope, right? So now if I save this and go inside the browser, I'll refresh. One, two, and there we go. The console message appears. So that's your basic example of converting a traditional callback style syntax into a promise dot then. Now, before moving on to the next example, I want to quickly show you the async await syntax for this. So let's make a new function called uh, main. It's going to be an async function as done by the async keyword there. Then we're going to say, just await, wait for 2000, then say console.log and once again, two seconds have passed, 
This code here is exactly the same, but it's using the async await syntax. Let's call the main function immediately now. I'll save, go back in the browser after two seconds, bang, the message appears again. So this right here is in my opinion, the main benefit of, uh, of course, uh, using or converting your callback functions into a promise. Now, what we haven't seen so far is actually being able to pass data um, from or essentially uh, taking a result from your asynchronous action. So the next example is going to be the geolocation API and getting the user's position. The reason why this here is going to be different is that now we're going to see how we can uh, get data back and the data being the user's position and also handling errors in cases where the user does not allow you to, uh, of course, retrieve their position. So let's get rid of all this except the main function skeleton. So we'll get rid of the weight. And now we're going to define a new function called get user location. Okay, this here is going to not take in any arguments, okay, but we're going to say return new promise once again, and I'm just going to accept the resolve and reject, but for now, I want to leave it blank and show you what the normal syntax is for getting a user's position. So, the way it would normally work is I would say something like, uh, navigator.geolocation.getCurrentPosition and within here I can pass in a success callback and an error callback. So I'll say something like data then do something like this and say console.log the data. Then I'll say as a second argument this is going to be the error uh, case and I'm going to say console.error and just log out the error. So we can see here using this traditional syntax how this lines up with the resolve reject. I've got this success callback and the error callback and it lines up with the resolve and reject which we're going to see shortly how we can of course move that into the promise. So I'll save this, go back in the browser here and we can see upon refreshing I've allowed this website to retrieve my location. So we can see here I've got the coordinates in the browser. Now I have faked my location to be I believe it's San Francisco, uh, sorry, <laughs> San Francisco. So that uh, that is what this lat long is. Uh, but the point is, you can see here, I've got the location in the browser. Let's uh, deny the location and refresh the page. And now we get the error. So in this case here, the error has been called within here. And of course, it's working as we expect. So let's now move this into the promise. It's going to be very straightforward. Let's copy this code and paste it within the return function. Uh, sorry, within the promises, uh, you know, constructor function, etc. And instead of console logging, I am going to simply say here resolve. Then I'm going to say reject just like this. So we're simply porting the resolve into success callback, reject into error callback. And, it, and that right there is going to work. So now I can say const uh, position equal to await. Then I can say get user location just like that. I can now say console.log position. I'll save this, go back in the browser and we get an error. Okay, because of course the error callback has fired off. Now you can use the dot catch syntax and dot then to of course handle your success and your error, but I'm using a sync await here. Now, in order to of course handle that error with the async await syntax, got to use a try catch. So I'll say try and then of course the position here and then catch and I can say error just like this console.error and then pass through here the error. Now I'm going to have to create a new let variable and just reassign this due to scoping issues. So now we're going to expect the position to be logged out uh, upon refreshing it. Of course, giving uh, uh, permission right there, but the error still appears perfect. I'm going to now say location as on reload and we get the position within the console. So we can see there that it is working. Now, one thing to mention here, uh, just to, I guess, further, uh, you know, make you understand how this works is 
as soon as you call the function, the, the code within here is actually going to run. So let me show you what this means. I'm going to, instead of passing through resolve, I'm gonna pass in a normal function just like this. And then I'm gonna say console.log action completed, okay? So in other words, the asynchronous action has completed. Then I'm gonna say resolve. So call the resolve function manually. Now this here uh, does the same thing as how the code was prior, but I'm just console logging within this function first before going to the resolve. So now I'm going to uh, get rid of all, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to not call the main function. So if I save this, go back in the browser, nothing happens, okay? So we aren't calling the main function. Instead, I am going to say get user location without using dot then, okay? I'll save this, go back in the browser and we get action completed. So the point I'm trying to make here is I didn't need to use dot then in order for this to fire off. This fires off immediately without dot then. But of course, the dot then allows you to uh, react to when it's done, or if it's done already, then the function is going to run straight away, if that makes sense. So that's your uh, geolocation example. The last one I want to show you here, I'm going to be quick as well, is the example by using file reader to convert a file into base64. So let's once again bring back the main function to show a, a sync awaits example here. I am going to also introduce a new input field in the HTML with a type of file and I'm going to give this an ID of my file. I'm going to be uploading an image uh, and then I want to convert it into base64. So the way this normally gets done is, well, first I need to say const my file equal to document.getElementById pass through here, the my file ID. Then I can just say my, sorry, my file dot add event listener, listen for the change event. So when the file gets changed, or in other words, when I select a file from the input field, I want to run this function. Now, this function is going to firstly create a file reader. Okay, then we're going to say new file reader, just like this, okay? And what you can do is you can say file reader dot read as data URL, then pass through here a file to read. I'm gonna say my file dot files and then at index zero. So if you don't, uh, sorry, if you don't know how the file inputs work, basically once you choose a file, it is going to place that file inside a array uh, called files right here. And this is of course present on the file input itself. So really I'm just referencing the single file that I select and I want to convert it into a data URL or base64 string with the mom type prefix. So I'm gonna say here, file reader dot add event listener, once it is loaded, okay? In other words, once it's done converting, I then wanna say console.log file reader dot result and result is gonna contain my base64. Let me show you what this looks like in the browser. I'll go back in the browser. I'll choose a file right here. I'll just choose the thumbnail from my previous video, open it up and we get this base64. That was rather quick, but of course it is still an asynchronous operation with the syntax. So there's an opportunity to of course convert it into a promise. So going back inside VS code here, we can now of course convert it into a promise. So we're going to need to accept a file within our promise function, the file to convert. And then we're going to expect, um, expect some data back. So in that case, the results. And also we expect there to be an error in some situations, which of course can also be uh, picked up on. So let's make a new function called uh, file to data URL, just like this. It's gonna take in the file, okay? Then it's going to return a new promise as per usual, taking the resolve and reject. Okay. Then we're going to say uh, const file reader and just copy all of this code, right? Okay. 
Now, the file reader is going to take in the file which we pass in instead of referencing the, uh, the actual input field directly. So take in that file right there. Now, instead of the console log, we're going to instead just call the resolve once uh, the operation is completed. However, in this situation here, we actually only care about a single piece of information. So what you'll see when you actually uh, try and reference whatever is in the, uh, the first argument here, you will see a lot of information. In fact, I might actually just show you what this looks like just for a clearer understanding. So I'll comment this code out and just simply console log what the first argument is instead. Okay, so data from the load function from the load event, sorry. I'll save this, go back in the browser here, I'll choose the file once again, and we can see the load event gives us this object, a progress event, and within here we have the target, which is the file reader. Then you've also, of course, got the result here. So it depends on how you want to implement your, uh, your promise, but in my situation, I only care about um, the results, the base64 string itself. So what I'm gonna do is go back inside here now, and I'm going to just say within the load, I'm going to resolve, and when I resolve, I want to actually pass through here um, the file reader dot results only. Okay, I'm also going to make a second add event listener this time for the error. So there is an error uh, event on the file reader, and in this here, so in this case, I'm going to reject and simply return back the error, which is done similarly to the result through the use of the error property. So reject file reader dot error, and we're going to of course read his data URL, and we are all done. So now I'm going to say here, uh, read as data URL. I'm going to pass through my file files at index zero, then say dot then, then I'm going to say uh, console dot log uh, base sixty four complete, then simply. Uh, log out the results, which is going to be the argument here. So I'm going to say data URL and I'm going to console.log that out. I'll save this, go back in the browser and upon choosing a file, we get here. Okay, that's not correct. Let's have a look here. Okay, my mistake, file to data URL as the function name. Let's try it again. Uh, choose a file, choose the thumbnail and we get this right here, we get the console log for this and also the URL itself. So it's all working perfectly fine. Now, let's have a look at the last example or the last uh, bit of code here using async. So calling an async function from the on change, I can now say const data URL equal to await file to data URL, my file dot files at index zero, then I'm going to say console.log data URL once again. Now, this is probably the best looking example using the await keyword, passing in a file and getting some results back. Console.log data URL, save this back in the browser, choose the file once again, and we get the base64 right there. So that is how to convert your JavaScript callback functions into promises. If this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.